eight cuts of beef cooked eight different ways. Today will be nothing short of beef-tastic. We're like little kids in a beef candy store today. We're all fans of the beef it's what's for dinner people. And when they said, hey fellas, would like to do a video, my mind immediately went, yes, and I wanna cook a lot of meat. So that's what we're doing. Almost every way I could think of to cook, we're doing. One thing's inside, the rest out here in what we'll call today Beef Central. Beef Central? Beef Land. Beef Land. But uh, before we begin, we need a little education about what we're doing. So let's take ourselves to Beef You. Morning class, this is Beef 101. I want to extend a welcome to everyone. I'm your instructor for today. My name is Mr. Cooking Guy. It's not a funny name, it's my name. Just deal with it. Before we get going, just want to say to the kid in the back, I think you know who I'm talking to. We want eyes up front, son. That's what today's about. We're here to learn, not make eyes at the girl next to you. It's time to get a little more in depth. Let me show you what we're dealing with today. I drew this myself. Again, no jokes. What you got here? <laughs> what was that? I'm being a kid, making oh. a joke. <laughs> All right, what you got here is your basic... <laughs> Mr. Smarty Pants, what did I say? What you got here is your basic cow. All the cuts that you enjoy at home, in a restaurant, at a store, come from here. You got your head, we're not dealing with that today. You got your shank, and you got your foreshank. We're not dealing with that today. We already did that in another day. We made also buco that came from here, and it was incredible. But the other eight primal cuts, the chuck, the rib, the short loin, sirloin, round, flank, short plate, and brisket, we'll make one selection from each. You get that? Let me break it down even further. From the chuck, we'll make an eye roast. The rib will be smoking back ribs. The short loin will make a whole tenderloin. The tri-tip will come from the sirloin. An eye roast will come from the round. Brisket will be making our own ground burger. Short plate, the most delicious skirt steak. And from the flank, you might have guessed it, a flank steak. Eight cuts we'll be preparing in eight different Modes of cooking, methods of cooking, techniques of cooking. What is it? It's, it's cooking styles. Eight cuts, eight different ways. I cannot wait. I hope you're excited too. Who's with me? Yeah! yeah. Let's Mr. Cooking Guy! Thank you, son. You see me after class. I got something for you. Let's get cooking. Beginning with what I think will take the longest, we're starting with beef back ribs. And boy, are these good, and boy, is this simple. Here's our rub. Garlic powder, salt, black pepper, onion powder, dry mustard, rosemary, smoked paprika, and oregano. And all these will go into our little bowl. Don't spill, don't spill, Sam. Don't spill, don't spill. Beautiful job. And we stir to combine, or put differently, and we mix. Now, you could just put this on these ribs, but you want them to stick. So we're gonna use a little binder, and that will be mustard. We'll start with the fellow on his back. And my friend Greg from the Barbecue Central Show always gives me crap when I don't pull the membrane off. Makes it a little easier to eat. So Greg, for you, I've done that. We apply a little mustard, we just rub it in. And yes, it's the back. It's less important than the front, but we've got lots of seasoning. You're gonna be getting bites back here, so don't skip it. Flip them over and repeat. So these we're gonna cook on a pit barrel smoker. They will hang inside. So now we're gonna put in two of the spikes that will let that happen. So I go like this. I like to go a couple bones down. Two, poke, come through the other side like that, and repeat, perfect. Let's go put them in. Here we come, in we go, on we go. It lives right there, and on goes the lid. See you in about an hour and a half, buddy. Ready for this one? I have round, it's a little roast, and it's going on the rotisserie as evidenced by the, what's this called? The spike. The spike, thank you. Here's how this goes down. We've got a few things here. Salt, pepper, garlic powder, we mix this. Remember our little mustard application? We like things to stick. Mustard and beef go really well together. Mustard and beef are amazing. I cut some of the fat off here, but look, it's a very lean little cut, so you want some fat, you really do. Now, salt, pepper, garlic powder, all the way around. Make it nice, try and get the ends. Beautiful. All right, let's put the tongs on. And I've already pre-marked. Look, it looks like it's uneven, but you'll see when it actually goes on, what's gonna happen is it's gonna be in the middle and be perfectly located. So we tighten here, put the other one on, we come in this way. 
down to here, we tighten. All right, before we go take this over to the rotisserie, let me show you one thing, and that's this little pot, and it gets the following. It's a stick of butter. There's about uh, half a cup of olive oil in here. It's gonna get uh, three or four cloves of minced garlic, and then fresh chopped thyme and rosemary. This will put gently on the heat, and when the roast is about a half hour done, we'll start basting with this, but first we put it on. All right, so this guy has a rear basket that will cook it like a, uh, you know, like a rotisserie chicken in the supermarket, that kind of thing. It's really convenient. You start it up, look how perfectly centered it is. Let me tell you something, when that's as hot as it is, and you bring it out and it's down on this end because you think it's centered and then you got to mess around with it, it's not good. I'm just going to leave it and in uh, 30 minutes, I'll start my basting. Next up, number three, a filet. When you buy a whole filet, a whole tenderloin of beef, it's longer. There's a crazy uh, side piece that comes off sort of like a thumb here. There's a longer tail. There's a thing called a chain, which is mostly fatty kind of piece that lives along the side. When you cut just the center portion out, the best part, this is a Chateaubriand. So, we're gonna do this very simply. Just a little bit of oil is all we need for this guy to help everything stick beautifully. So by the way, you can buy them trimmed. They've taken the fat and the silver skin off. You can buy them untrimmed and just know they're more expensive trimmed. But honestly, I think unless your knife skills are amazing, you're gonna cut way too much off if you're trimming it yourself. So now we just season and we can be fairly aggressive because look at this, it's a thick piece of meat. By the way, there's five more things after this. I can rest once everything's kind of going along, but right now, my tension level is high. How do you boys feel? Feel good. I'm in oh, beef mode. Great. Glad somebody's calm and casual. Okay, where's this kid going? To the smoker, but wait, before it does, these shiitake mushrooms are gonna be cooked along with some garlic and butter at the end to be serving with it, and it'll be fantastic. Okay, smoker time. And here we go, right on. Put our little friend right there in the middle. That's probably gonna be somewhere around an hour or maybe an hour and a quarter. There's our tri-tip. Doesn't look like much because it's in a bag. But that's because it's been marinating, but wait till you get a load of what's in it. And by the way, tri-tip because of the shape. Very popular in California. By the way, every cow has two of these, but some states tell me they can't find them. I don't know. I think the butchers are keeping them for themselves. So this marinade is miso paste, rice vinegar, sugar, soy, sesame oil, garlic, and ginger. And it is tremendous. I saved some back for a little extra basting. We can throw this on the grill now. It's smoking because I've just sprayed it with grill spray, but boom, there we go. And like we always say, we're just gonna turn this guy a lot, but let's just take advantage of the sauce that was in the pan. And so we'll yank this in the low 30s. We absolutely do not want to overcook anything, ever. Can always put something back on if it's not done enough. It's very hard to undo an overcooked piece of beef. Seems like a, that's what she said opportunity of from some <laughs> level, but. It was going through my head, actually. Can we have a look? Good. Just keep turning, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. And remember, this little extra is really mostly for the end. When you take it off, you wanna put a little bit more on. All right, let's give it a fling onto its backside. And we turn. Ain't that pretty, fellas? Yes, it is, Sam, it is very pretty. Thought so. All right, so just continue as planned. We're cooking, we're turning, we're searing. We can come in with a little basting, but do make sure you save some for the very end. And we're gonna yank her off. And here is our lovely little miso soy marinated tri-tip. So again, cutting against the grain, it's kind of weird, it's sort of like a brisket. And sometimes this part goes this way and this part goes this way. So I'm gonna cut here, turn it. <laughs> and by the way, I turned it a lot. That's my trick for getting it Nicely, medium, the same, all the way across. So now, if you just get a beef-centric bite like that. I've said before, I do think that tri-tip should be in the dictionary when you look up beef flavor, because it really is so iconically beefy. Boys. Mm. Seriously, the sweetness of the miso is amazing, but you do want it to char a little bit because it just does something magical, not just to the texture, but to the taste. That is crazy good. Lime juice, my goodness. Beef back rib time. Oh, wow, look at this. 
Do you see what's happening here? Oh, smokes. Let me get this guy. Work with me. You know, the pit barrel has a little device that helps you get these things off the posts, but I lost it. Oh, snap. Let's try them. Now look, I think a popular thing to do with these big beef back ribs is about three quarters of the way through, you put a barbecue sauce on them. But I'm funny because I like these to taste like beef. I don't want them to taste like something else. So, and you see this, this is called pullback. When the meat starts to pull away from the bone, you know you're dealing with stuff that's gonna be really delicious. So let me try and just cut right here, get myself one. Oh man, this is like, what is this like? This is just a crazy giant thing. Look, the, the rub, it's all about the rub. Uh, boys, I'm gonna hook you guys up after, but this is a two-handed proposition and you can't. I don't think you can. Oh God, I'm just being flooded with the best beefy flavor ever. That's the reason not to use all that sauce. Sometimes it has a place, but I think it gets used way too much. Look at that beautiful bite. Oh my gosh. All right, there's, there's more. We have to just keep rolling. I wanna eat this, but I can't. Remember the mushrooms for the filet. The filet is smoking and I'm losing mushrooms over the edge. So shiitakes, nothing but butter and a little olive oil in here so far. So now we'll give it some garlic, a nice whack of it, and let the garlic start to get super fragrant. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. And while we do a little salt and pepper, not a lot because there's something else salty coming in in a minute. When it's fragrant, you give it a stir. Oh boy. One of my favorite things ever in the whole world, shiitake mushrooms cooked like this. And then, people let me tell you about my best friend. Couple tablespoons of soy paste. Sacre bleu. These are going to be magnifico. The little sweetness from the soy and the saltiness. And I say sweetness because it's soy paste. It's definitely sweeter than liquid soy. All right, these I can kill the heat on. We'll rewarm them when the filet comes out. Remember the smoked tenderloin, boys? Well, here it is. So here's what we did. We reverse seared it. We cooked it at 225 degrees. And of course, use a meat thermometer to reach your desired level of doneness. Sometimes when you do this, you'll want to then take it in a pan and sear it to get a crust on the outside. But I think after smoking, this gorgeous red that it becomes, I think it's a shame to kill that. So I'm not going to. I'm just going to cut it and we're going to have a bite. Who doesn't want that? I'm facing you there, Maxi boy. The grain goes this way, across the grain would be like that. Ah, snap, look at the pretty little fellow. Now this. <laughs> the juice that, that just came out of that. And you know, you don't. It literally cascaded out. You really don't have to let it rest. You normally would let something rest that was cook super hot and fast, but slow like this, no. Chancy, Maxwell, salt, pepper, garlic powder. That's it, a little bit of oil. But wait, don't stop there because remember these, the shiitakes? Mm, they're melting. I love a shiitake. I also love a parade, but that's a whole nother thing. I love a shiitake. They're the most delicate, smooth, smooth. I, 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 mm, Did you say you love a parade? Yeah, it's an old song, like a really old song. Before my time, I love a parade, na -na 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 -na, whatever it does. So, shiitake is fantastic. And this together, watch. Wait, stay right there. Just take a little, little half piece of the filet, and then you marry it with a couple pieces of the shiitake. And you make like a little burrito taco thing. <laughs> it's just sheer craziness. It's sheer craziness how good this stuff is. The next one, it's going to be the skirt steak. Wait to see this crazy thing. Yes, it looks ugly like this, but wait till I unveil. I have to go all the way to the end because skirt steak is a long piece of meat. Look at that. And yes, definitely fibrous, as you can see. It's a horseshoe. Let me make this perfect. Yes, it's fibrous as you can see, but when you cook this right and you keep it medium rare and you slice it across the grain, it is one of the greatest cuts of beef you can ever have. But we're not just serving it like this. We're gonna make a little chimichurri with it. In fact, a red one. Everything goes in the processor, couldn't be easy. Don't write anything down. Recipe link is below. We begin with a shallot. Love a little shallot. Hey, little shallot. We had some garlic. Then we have cumin, smoked paprika, red pepper flakes, kosher salt and pepper in. 
To that, we're gonna add about a half a cup of cilantro, a loose cup, but the same of parsley, some roasted red peppers. They come from a jar or you do them yourself. Those are gonna be great for flavor. Put our lid on and we'll pulse a bit. Now we'll introduce some olive oil while it's running. Should we check it? Yeah. Oh, snap. You ever seen anything more gorgeous than that? I know, Chance's eyes. But aside from Chance's eyes, that is spectacular. I want a little bit more oil in that. We'll give it a taste. Let's try it. You are gonna love that. But that means you have to make it because you're not getting this. I'd give you some, but clearly you're not here. These boys are gonna love it. All right. Get the evil hot and get the skirt on. And with nothing more than a little oil to lube them up. Oh no. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha. And check that smell right away. That's the smell, the crazy delicious smell of cooking beef. Wow. It's like a steakhouse right in front of our noses. Chance, that's the feeling of hot grease burning your legs. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, remember the Seinfeld shrinkage episode? Of course. That's what's gonna happen here. So we need a little bit of oil on this side for when we flip it, but we're trying to keep it nice. Let's have a look. That's incredible. Incredible crust. Fantastic. Look at this thick end. He'll need a little extra on his own, but. All right, I'm gonna try and flip him. Wow, there's your shot. But now you know what we're gonna do? Anybody, now the chimichurri can come on because while it's sizzling away like this, remember what I said, it's like that door that opens and pulls in everything. Oh, mamma mia. That's just nuts. That's just nutso. All right, let's get this guy off. Come on, buddy. <laughs> okay, look, here's the deal. I want the bottom to get some of this chimmy before I cut them. And the right thing to do would be to wait. Let the juices reabsorb back into the meat. That'd be the right thing to do. But when you've cooked as many things today as we have, and they've all been so delicious as they have been, and then you get to this kit, the red chimichurri, how can you not just dive in? One more. And then if this was you serving it at home, yes, a final base like this is beautiful, but then I would always give your guests a little on the side because they're gonna want it. So the right way to do this, you saw the grain. Astro, you saw the grain go this way, right? It's impossible to make a huge long cut like that. So my move is this. I cut this way and then turn it like that and then cut. That's beautiful. Look at these pieces. I will take one and I'll offer to the boys. Boys, bon appetit boys. You get the garlic, I think right away. I'm getting the cilantro, but I'm also getting those roasted red peppers. This is not fair. This is just so not fair. The second of our roast is the Chuck Eye Roast. I've got him tied up, so he maintains a uh, relatively similar shape all the way through, so it cooks the same way all the way through. We're just gonna give him a little oil to start. Him, I don't know, I imagine, but, so just some oil, because we wanna sear it. Him, her, right, that's too personal. It's a him. It, <laughs> it's a him. All right, I just wanna relax. I'm feeling the pressure here. Okay, hot cast iron pan beside me. So let's put it in and get some color going. You better not put that in before I get over there. Christ. I was waiting. You were gonna do it. No, I you wasn't doing do it. it. I wasn't I doing something. it. I was not. Go ahead. That's the sound you wanna hear. What you don't wanna hear is Max yelling at you for him thinking you're jumping the gun. While that is getting some color, we can make the little uh, oil-based rub that's gonna go on it. And that consists of salt, thyme, smoked paprika, cumin, black pepper, and garlic. So in, and in, and mix. You're making a paste, basically. Great, let's check our color. That's it. Just do that, all the way around. Again, it's kind of round, but it's basically got four sides, so I guess it's not round. When it's there, kill the heat, take them out. You're gonna let it cool a little bit. But while it does, put some vegetables in. You got onion, you got celery, you got carrot. This is gonna be the bed with which he lives while he cooks in the oven. And they're just sizzling from the residual heat. I don't need to cook them here because they're gonna cook in the oven. Now you can take your little fellow, get your brush and just paint. Look at that does to the color right away, right away. 
The smell. It's amazing. When you get herbs and spices on hot beef. It doesn't sound right. That didn't come out right, did it? That's why it's a man, hot beef. Hey, 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 hey. Be respectful here. So just do a good job. Turn them all the sides. This now gets nestled on top. You just did it. Oh, you just did it. There I did. You go. There's it's sorry, the I evidence. thought the camera was on me. There's okay, here, watch evidence. this. Shit. Sorry. I've got eight recipes in my head. I was watching you and I knew it was gonna happen. Go so ahead. then you should have been ready with your dumb camera. Oh, I wanted to let you. Now take a little bit extra of this sauce. We're gonna give the, the vegetable some love. I'm just trying to get every, keep everything straight, man. Busted. I didn't do it on purpose. All right, this now nestles on top. We do one more thing. We take a bottle of vermouth that we do about a quarter of a cup in the bottom. We pick the whole kid up and into a 350 oven he goes. And here's our friend. Let me display him the right way with the STCG facing up or out or forward. Here's what I like about them. The vegetables cooked at the same time. They're perfect. Still a little of bite to them. They're not mush. And we'll take this guy out. Let me get this out of the way, pan's hot. And just know that this could become a pan gravy if you want, or you could take the vegetables out. You put a little flour in, a little cornstarch, thicken it up if you wanted. If you don't want, then don't. It's all you. Everything is you. We tell you this all the time. We're merely your guides, your Sherpas. Hey, look who's hiding. Come on, you kids. Crazy little guys. All right, let's just check them out right in the middle. And once again, it looks like we've done something very good here, fellas. So this, you can cut this guy a little thicker. And this is a beautiful little piece of meat. Okay, this is good. Look, it's not a filet, which, oh my God, it's probably ready. But, mm, I'll be back. Okay, remember our uh, little round roast? Remember, it's lean, it needs some fat. Not only will this deliver fat, but this garlic, thyme, rosemary, butter, and oil, it will deliver flavor. So. You know, it's been about a half an hour since it went on. I say we do this every 50 minutes or so. I got a lot to do. We may not necessarily show you other basings. Hope you're okay with that. Cook well, my little friend. Cook well. All right, so it's cooled a bit. I've loosened these guys. I can take them out. It's not cooled that much. It's off. We can do this. Oh, sweet. Sweet. Sweet Caroline, shall we? Look how pretty that is. Now here's the thing about a cut like this. It needs to be cut thin. The thinner it is, the more tender it's gonna be. But you see the juices that are coming off of this? Come on, that's a bite for the ages right there. I got juice all down my arm. Mm, look, it's really flavorful because of this, this garlic, thyme, rosemary. Butter thing. Oh boy. Well, I can't stand here looking at you. I, I have to go back to something else. Next up is a flank steak. And it looks like that because it needs marinating four hours, six hours, overnight hours, whatever you want. Let me tell you what's in here. There's miso paste, rice vinegar, sugar, soy sauce, sesame oil, garlic, and ginger. And it's beautiful. And that extra little sauce looks like this. Miso, so fantastic. Really hits the umami notes beautifully. So this is gonna go on the Santa Maria grill now, but as it finishes, we're gonna start basting it with, this is a little bit of sriracha, soy, and sesame oil. Just carry that Asian theme through. Big flavors, deliciousness. This ain't gonna take long to cook. Shall we, boys? Do it. Let's go. Nothing like cooking on your own face. So here we go. That's what you want. You want some sizzle right there. So look it, it's thin, it's room temp. It's not gonna take all that long. I'm not gonna start basting it until I uh, flip it over. But for now, let it sit, start to heat, get some color, just be one with it. All right, and our flanky is ready. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's ready. Now remember, we made this basting sauce. Just paint it on. Oh boy, this is a nice combination. Really nice. Wait till the other side is done. Then it gets basted and off we come and we're down. But don't forget, we got to make that side pretty too. So baste this guy and basting while it's hot. That's the key because warm meat is like a welcome mat and it just brings in everything that you put onto it. All right. Now the presentation side is always the first side that is face down. And that's what we got going right here. Now we just need to cut this. If there was ever a better example of which way the grain goes, I don't know what it is. It's this, it's perfect. So if you cut, we'll go right across the midsection. That, ladies and gentlemen, is so about perfect, wow. Sean, for me. But here, watch, I'll do this. 
And then this little, couple little bites here for the fellas. Fellas, you in? Yeah. I'm in. Okay, stand by. Mm. Flank is a fibrous cut, as you can see from the, my glasses have like beef grease all over them. There you are. Flank steak is a fibrous cut, as you can tell from all the striations. But it tastes so good, so beef centric. And this is it. What are you looking at? Well, you're looking at a beautiful piece of brisket, the flat. In the brisket, there's the point and the flat. This is the flat. So earlier, I took about an inch and a half wide piece with fat on it, because I like a good fat ratio, and I ground it, and I turned it into this burger. There's nothing else in this burger but straight, beautiful, flat brisket. Which, it's now a burger brisket, but, but so, here's what we're gonna do. Take a little bit of avocado oil, a little splooch around it goes, a little kosher salt and pepper. I'll do the other side when we put it in the pan, but before you put it in the pan, I'm gonna make a little smoked paprika aioli. Why? Because why not? Because it's gonna be fantastic. This, smoked paprika, garlic powder, cumin, and kosher salt. They'll go in here. Max didn't think I could do this up in the air. Of course I can, Max. And now some mayo. And we mix. Mm. Dang, it's gonna be good. Nothing crazy. Once again, it's about the beef today, if that wasn't obvious. We want it to taste like beef. Okay, this is made. My pan in front of me is hot. Let's get cooking. And in we go. Just like it to make contact with the whole patty in the pan. Now we can do this second side. Tiny bit of that, a little bit of that. We got a surprise going on this when we're putting it together. I think you're gonna really like. So if it wasn't obvious, now we're just cooking a burger. Just let it go. You know how to cook a burger. I think if you go like four minutes the first side, three minutes on the second side, you're gonna be in good shape. That's assuming your pan's not screaming hot. We've made a lot of things today. I'm very impressed with myself. I have not forgotten one thing. You know I always forget something. Until now that is. The uh, smoked paprika aioli needs a little lime juice. And by little, I mean little, because this is a terrible, There we go. Just about a, a teaspoon, which is pretty much all that lousy half gave me. Okay, now we're good. Let's flip the uh, burger. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Let's cook a little bit more, then we're close. Okay, next step, because we're almost there, is a little aged white cheddar, splash of water. We put the lid on and we melt. And after this, boys, we're building. Here's how this goes down. Toasty bun, of course toasty. Don't even think about not toasting it. It's not a five-year-old's birthday party anymore. And now this beautiful smoked paprika aioli with lime, our patty with cheese. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous you. Remember the surprise? Yeah. Anybody? The surprise is bacon, but it's beef bacon. Baby Chance said he didn't know it existed. And I'll be honest with you, not many people know beef bacon exists. But I'm telling you, this is so delicious. And then, nothing to do but put that guy on top. And I guess have a bite. So, uh, look, I might as well be the test guinea pig. Oh, look at the juice. Oh, my word. Let me tell you something. One of the reasons it's so juicy, when you grind your own beef, you keep the strands loose and it gives the juice a chance to run around inside it rather than deflect off like water off a duck's back. We like them loose. Hey. What? We like the strands loose. Can you get the camera on me? I'm really dying to bite. Oh my God. The, the, just the whole. Look, the fact that it's brisket sets it apart right away. Oh my God, it's so good. The, the beef bacon, the crispiness, the unexpected flavor of the beef bacon, because you might not know what you were eating. You just know it's freaking delicious. And that's it. I don't know what to say. I'll say thank you, Beef Board, for sponsoring. Oh, I'll say thank you, Beef Board. Sorry. I'll say thank you, Beef. It's what's for dinner, people, for sponsoring this video. And um, as far as I'm concerned, we now know the slogan is absolutely true. Beef, it is what's for dinner. And with what we did today, it's for lunch, it's for a late night snack, it's for breakfast tomorrow morning, it's for D2 tonight. And like we always do, <laughs> oh my God. They don't put the dot after Mr. in Canada.
Oh, I didn't. But you see me after class. I got something for you. Let's get cooking. Sounded gross. <laughs>